On today's show, where do we agree with Mavericks fans? Where do we disagree with Mavericks fans? And what kind of hot takes do we have that nobody else has about the Dallas Mavericks? We'll share all that on today's Locked On Mavs. I'm Luka Doncic, and this is Locked On Mavericks. Now Mavericks, NBA champion. He hit it by It's good, and the Mavericks have won the game. We don't believe you shouldn't be here. Loyalty never fades away. And welcome. You are locked on to the Dallas Mavericks. My name is Nick Angstead, media member and NBA channel manager for the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for being part of the show. Make it Locked On Mavs your first listen every day. Join the Raccoon Squad, be an everyday, or subscribe or follow for free to search Locked On Mavericks wherever you get your podcasts or on YouTube. But the best way you can help us grow the show is to listen every day and to comment anything below let us know in the comment section what's your current mavericks hot take just a take you're holding on to you're like all right this is mine and mine alone today's episode is brought to you by bird dogs go to birddogs.com slash locked on nba enter the promo code locked on nba for a free white tech hat with any purchase you won't want to take your bird dogs off we promise you if you want to support the show text us get text alerts from us on mavs rumors and all kinds of stuff text straight to your phone Subscribe to our subtext, click the link in the description below, or text the number. And join me, as always, my co-host, writer, contributor at Mavs.com. The FIBA feline, the one more thing king. What you got for me, Isaac Harris? It's a great bird dog's hat, by the way. I really recommend it. I use it at the gym all the time because it's like the lightest hat I've ever had. That just It's great. I love it. it. It's pretty nice. I want to give a shout out to Derek right off the top. Lively. Uh, Uh, Not lively. Yo, you see Apple Jacks? (laughs) Uh, this guy looks a little bit different than lively, <laughs> but uh, Derek stopped me at church today. So I did some wow. stuff on, uh, I was on stage at church. I come off stage and this guy, oh, uh, and this guy, he's like, Hey man, my name's Derek. And it all just hit me. You're you do math stuff on YouTube. Don't you? I was like, <laughs> yes, let's talk about uh, the Lord. And let's talk about Luca <laughs> all in one. Uh, so everybody turned to the book of John um yeah buddy we're getting capella too so listen <laughs> uh, but anyway i always love talking to people who uh listen to the pod and have supported this so thank you you're talking about capella and copernicus at at church <laughs> <laughs> so jesus stopped at capernaum and no, capella well, i don't what I don't, <laughs> uh, on today's show though Isaac and I wanted to pick out a hot take that we each have about the Mavericks. We'll share that a little later. We also wanted to pick a minority take that we have. So like a take that we don't think a lot of Mavericks fans have. So one that we're kind of disagreeing with. And then we wanted to also share a take that we agree with that every, we think that all Mavs fans kind of have this opinion right now and share those. And we haven't shared them with each other. We're going to, we're going to go back and forth and share what we think our takes are and be surprised by each other. And uh, I'm going to let Isaac start. You want to start with majority? Yeah, like majority. This is something that we think that other Mavericks fans agree with, or most Mavericks fans will agree with. Yeah, I am I am with the fans on Dwight Powell just can't be our center all year. Like, he just can't be the answer. Like, he, he can't. I, I love Dwight. I love that he's back on that cheap deal. I think that was a great deal to bring him back on. Um, but, I, but I'm with the fan I say outrage, but I, yeah, I'm with the, that's what it I'm, is. <laughs> I'm with the fans on, hey, we just can't do another year of just Dwight. Yes, I mean, you know, we have Derek Lively spent a draft pick on him, Rashawn Holmes. However, you feel about Rashawn Holmes, but right now I'd pencil in Dwight as the starter, and I, I'm with him. I I don't think we can we can roll with Dwight all year as our starter. I totally agree with you. I, I think that. He is going to be the starter, like you said. I, mean, I think that that's what's going to happen with Jason Kidd as the coach. But I'm with you that I've said all offseason and will continue to say the offseason is still a failure if Dwight Powell is the starting center. Like, no matter how good we think they did top to bottom, they still failed. I think you can do well and fail. It's like, you know, in, in baseball, you hit, or in, I guess you can, well, let's do a basketball analogy. This is a basketball analogy. 40% of your threes is amazing. You're still missing 60% of your threes, right? You can still fail that amount of time. I think that it's probably, they probably shot like 40% this offseason, and their 60% that they missed is the center spot that's still 
ever, like two seasons in a row, Nico Harrison has come up and said the exact same thing. We've got to get better defense and rebounding. And I don't know if they've gotten better at either of those, like like, yeah. t- like rim, rim protection defense. I don't think they've gotten better at either of those things unless Derek Lively's ready to go. And they've even said that we're not – you know, sure, he's going to be ready right away. Although, Nico Harrison did say he doesn't see either of the rookies playing any time in the G League. Now, maybe that's an old take that that he may not agree with right now after some other moves in the offseason. But I'm totally with you on that one. Dwight can't be the starter. He can't be the center answer throughout the rest of the season. If they want to get back in the playoffs, if they want to win in the playoffs, it, they just can't do it. Yeah. Rashawn Holmes has to emerge. Derek Lively has to emerge. Or someone else from somewhere else. From Capernaum. Who knows? Someone else has to become the same. I have another majority take, but I'll let you go first. Or another one. Luka and Kyrie are the best backcourt in the NBA. Whoa! I think they are. And I think I agree with, with Mavericks fans that say this, that, that that they are. You start looking at some. The first one I thought of was Booker and Beal. It's probably like the best talent backcourt. Mm. If that's going to be their backcourt, it's a pretty good one. Still think Luka and, and Kyrie are better. A lot riding on Beal on that. I think we, it's a, like a wait and see on Brad Beal. It's a lot riding on Beal being Chris Bosh, right? Like figuring figuring that out. He's been the mm-hmm. the number one on this these like mediocre to bad Wizards teams for the last couple of years. I mean, when's the last time he played with a star like John Wall? Twenty <laughs> sixteen. I mean, are we talking seven years? KP slander. Okay. Yeah. No, he can take it. He's okay. <laughs> Steph and Chris Paul is the backcourt now for the Whoa. Warriors. Nah, that, that's, I'm still taking Luca and Kyrie Garland and Mitchell for the Calves. John that's Morant, pretty dang good. John yeah. Morant and Marcus Smart. Now, no, sorry. Harden and Maxi. <laughs> Mac, Tyrese Maxi. <laughs> the the Celtics now, if they if they do start Chris Porzingis and another big, it's probably going to be Jalen Brown and Derek White. It's a pretty good one, but it's not the best. Yeah. Uh, I, think, I think Garland and Mitchell so far are still that's a good. that's a good one. Other than that, I mean. You're you're trying Trey Young and Dejounte Murray is another one you could you could point out. I think they probably think they are. <laughs> You've got uh, with the Heat thing. Is it Damian Lillard and who's the? Is it Jimmy Butler? Does he become the two on that team? Oh, if I were just putting him into Miami already. I mean that, um, but that's what like that could happen. But I agree with them that I think they're the best pairing the best talent. The problem is they've got to put it together and win now because I don't think I think I don't think anyone else is going to agree. But the one thing that the Mavs have in their favor is that none, some of those other like backcourts haven't even played yet. Booker and Beal, Steph and Chris Paul, like a lot yeah. of the the quote unquote best backcourts in the NBA haven't even put ball to court yet at this point. Anthony Edwards and whoever. Man, he's dude's Well, it's good. Mike Conley, so that's not. Yeah. I heard, uh, no, I heard I, Anthony I, Edwards is the new face of the NBA. Did you hear that? Wow, really? Who said that? It's just Kendrick Perkins, but... Oh, come on. All right, he says um, everyone's the face of the NBA. Yeah. I'll, I'll do another one. I I feel like a lot of fans are in agreement about Josh Green having a big year. Yeah. And I'm, I'm with them. I think this is... Now, air quote here. However you want to define breakout, I think this is Josh Green's breakout year. Mm. In the sense of, like, I don't think he's making an all-star team, but I think this is the best season of his career. So... Um, I'm with the fans on that. I think he's going to get a prime opportunity. This is, you know, he's been in the league handful of years. He's coming off of FIBA, hopefully healthy, <laughs> um, yeah, healthy. and, uh, and all of that. But, uh, I think Josh will have a good year. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Which by the way, if you've been listening and watching our FIBA bonus coverage, uh, I've been doing coverage of the, the FIBA games. And I did an episode with, uh, Australia the other day where Australia played, against um who did australia play they played against japan in that game josh green did go down with some kind of knee leg injury it was a weird thing looked like he hyperextended his knee but australian team came out and said it was a left ankle injury but he should be good for maybe their next warm-up game which their next warm-up game is actually uh on tuesday i believe against georgia like 5 a.m texas time <laughs> Thanks. Wow, go Bulldogs. And then uh, they'll play their actual first, the actual FIBA World Cup group get, play games. We'll start on Friday, 3 a.m. Australia against Finland. So see who see who's up with me watching that game at that point. <laughs> Not me. But Josh Green, he's, it seems like he's going to be okay. We'll see what kind of precaution that the Australia team takes with him. They already have held him out of a couple preparation games with an elbow situation. They've played him in two. He got this ankle. So we'll see what happens with him. But coming up. I've got a couple more that I agree with the majority, and let's get to ones where we think we're in the minority.
from Mavericks fans. And uh, we'll talk about that coming up. But before we do, let me tell you about Bird Dogs. Bird Dogs has amazing shorts, pants, joggers, all kinds of stuff. I'm wearing the white tech hat right now. I already said, I think I would buy a pair of shorts just to have this hat. I love this hat so much. It's, It's great to work out in, especially since it is the bird dog days of summer right now. It is so hot outside. It's, it's We've hit a record. Pete Delkis tweeted out that I think we were close to a record of the number of 105 degree days we've had in Dallas. It's just, it's just brutal outside. Bird dogs makes you look good. They have stretch khaki shorts that are designed to fit slimmer through the thigh and leg, giving you a truly sculpted look. You can go check out what they have on their site and go to birddogs.com slash locked on NBA or enter the promo code locked on NBA, all one word, all caps, locked on NBA. For a free white tech hat, the one that I'm wearing right now, you can see it on YouTube. That's birddogs.com slash locked on NBA. For a free white tech hat, you won't want to take your bird dogs off. We promise you that. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. <laughs> I enjoyed that. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out with us on Lockdown Maps, being part of the show, part of the Raccoon Squad, listening every day. Appreciate each and every one of you. Tomorrow, we'll be back with more Dallas Mavericks takes. And again, this starting this weekend, we will have more um, episodes on the actual FIBA games. We'll cover them like their Mavericks game. We'll post them at our, our normal time. We post episodes and things like that. So you don't have to wake up early. And uh, you can watch them all on demand, by the way. They're going to be on demand. The NBA app is going to have some kind of deal with the uh, courtside 1891. So everybody will be able to watch these games. You'll be able to watch them on demand. Or you can watch them live. So... We'll have that and this weekend. We're we're inching closer to being uh, just a month away from media day. Just uh, are we throw, really? Wow! Throwing that out there that 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 made me very excited. Uh, <laughs> uh, as the Australian announcer said the other day, oh that that he got aroused looking at that, looking at that pass. Whoa! All right, the Australian announcer used that used that word as a descriptor for like Whoa. a really good pass, and I was like. Maybe we don't. Maybe we little, don't use that little word. Little Blue Chew sponsor. <laughs> it's like all my Twitter is right now. Uh, okay, Isaac, let's get into some more. Okay, a couple more takes that I agree with the majority. Yes. Kyrie is better than Jalen Brunson. Majority. I think the okay. majority of Mavs fans believe that, and I agree with them. Yeah. Yeah, like overall talent, yeah. Yeah. The Mavs are much deeper this this year than the start of last year. Ooh, much deeper. Yeah. I'm going to play the fifth on that. I, I need to, I really need to look at the rosters. Okay. Here's who they're, no, so they, because I think we have some, like, I think when we look at it on paper and say, all right, yes, Rashawn Holmes and Derek Jones Jr. And some of that, it's like, yeah, yeah, I'll agree with you. Yeah, sure. The same as, as the start of last year, Luca, Tim Hardaway, Josh Green, Jaden Hardy, Maxi Kleba, uh, Dwight Powell, and then uh, your boy. JaVale McGee. And these are the players that the Mavericks had at the beginning of last season that they won't have this season. Spencer Dinwiddie, Dorian Finney-Smith, Reggie Bullock, Christian Wood. Okay, rotation players. Frank Nilakina, Theo Pinson, Davis Bertans, Faku Kompazu. And then the players that they uh, the players that they have added now at this point are Kyrie Irving. Big upgrade there. Grant Williams, Seth Curry, Omax, Derek Jones Jr., Dante Exum, Rashawn Holmes, Derek Lively the second. I mean, you feel good about a lot of those names, whereas you only felt good about four of the names that I mentioned before. So even just that list, you go, okay, I feel like they're deeper now. Yes. I'm not as confident as you are in that, but... You don't yes. think that that Omax, Derek Jones Jr., Dante Exum, Rashawn Holmes, and Derek Lively will be better than Frank Nilakina, Theo Pinson, Davis Bertans, and Faku Composite? Okay. Well, if you put it that way, yes. That's the way I'm putting it. That's the way I was putting it before. Well, when you were listing off the four, like Dorian, Reggie, you know, Spencer, Christian Wood, like these guys were in the rotation that like, yes, the but end of the bench right now is yes, better. deeper, that, but deeper. you're asking, but that's yes. the question. Yeah. But, but uh, okay. I think deeper is also like, I'm thinking of the whole, like the whole team in the sense of, Josh Green was further down that list. Well, now he's like for, further up the list. Yeah. And then we're replacing with a couple rookies and all that. So, yes. Here's the top of that list, though. Dinwiddie, Dorian, Bullock, Wood. 
Kyrie, yeah. Grant Williams, Seth Curry, Rashawn Holmes. Like even just going from those four see, to these four, the, the Seth and Rashawn Holmes one. But Kyrie the, makes up for Dinwiddie and Christian Woods like <laughs> offense. You know, like you can be yeah. like you're just just by adding it, you're adding an all star starter to that yeah. group. Like that even just makes it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. Let's share some opinions that we think we're in the minority that not a lot of Mavs fans have these. Give me your first one. Oh, here we go. Um, I think we need another wing before a big. Yeah, you have been in this. You have been in this for a while. Yeah, I, I just think that, you know, it, it all made sense to me about the Thibel stuff. You know, yep. if they had Thibel right now, then it you're about having this wing rotation that, you know, it's it's a drop when it comes to you have Grant Williams and then you honestly have a little bit of some un- unknowns, even starting with Josh. Yeah, it's do. like projecting Josh to take a leap. We are big fans of Omax. And then it's, you know, Tim, you know what you're getting offense wise, but like defense, like Derek Jones Jr. Who, who is playing? It, it's just wings matter so much that if you're telling me right now, I wing or big, is it a Thibel type of wing or a, Thibel type of center like the same like level of player but in, in a big spot i think i would take the wing i think i still disagree with you on this just because i mean i think i'm in the majority because can the mavericks can the mavericks get one like can they get one wing that's like a rotation cal they need a rotation caliber wing out of Derek jones jr omax dante exum uh, i guess throw seth curry or, or whoever in there or can they get a starting center out of Dwight Powell, Rashawn Holmes, Derek Lively? <laughs> like you're you're filling up you're filling a much bigger role because you do have two starting wings at that point. So I think that their need yeah. for center, I still think it's 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 bigger, but that's why you're in the minority. So yeah. I have a minority take. Okay. I have three and oh I'm, tr- crap. I'm, tr- I'm trying to decide which one to, I've been trying to decide which one to go to for like the last two hours. I can't wait. All right, I'm going to do this one. The Mavericks can win with Jason Kidd. I'm not playing. I'm watching, just like you guys. I think I'm in the minority with this because I don't think a lot of fans after last year believe in Jason Kidd. And I think if you would have listened to Locked On Mavs the last couple of months, you would think that I wouldn't think that Jason Kidd can, can win with this team. I have to apologize that you felt that he should have played more. Maybe from that quote that was two years ago at this point, you would think that about me. But I, I do still believe that they can win with him as the coach. I also believe that I think he quit on the team last year when they, they didn't have enough. <laughs> they, they just didn't have it. It didn't have the combination of players that he wanted. If they have the combination of players that he wants, if they have leadership on the team, which looks like Kyrie can step into one of those roles. Luca seems to be stepping into that with the Slovenia games we've watched. And I think that going into this next season with the Mavericks, he'll be able to a little bit more because there's less like older guys. It's all a lot of guys, his age or younger with this team. And so I think he'll be able to step into that role a lot, a lot easier. And I think Jason Kidd can still win that, that Western conference finals run was not as fluky as it looks. <laughs> if you, mm. if you like look at last, like that season. And then you look at this past season, how bad the Mavericks were. I thought you were going to break out in a song. You're talking about believing in Jason Kidd. I was like, I believe do in you, Jason Kidd. No, I wasn't. Do I you believe. believe in Jason Kidd? really don't Um, think he's coached in yeah jason kid approval rating definitely took a hit last year for a lot of fans and uh this is he needs a bounce back year um you know the front office stuff believes in him we had tim kato on the spot a few weeks ago and i asked tim straight up i was like uh kato is jason kid on the hot seat and he's like no i don't think he is they they believe in him too much and all the connections he just introduced Dirk in Springfield, uh, you know, like there, there's in Dirk's, you know, in the front office stuff, and th- there's just connections. They're so close with Jason Kidd. Another I thing with that is another thing with that is I don't think the Mavericks want to do the Sacramento Kings route of replacing their coach every year. You know, and just you just get into this cycle where you can just you can blame the coach every single year for something. If think- Kidd was let go, it was because of Luca. Like that's the yeah, only right. reason yeah. why he, he would he would go elsewhere. But yeah. right. Yeah. Uh my other minority takes before we move on to our, our hot takes now. I think Josh Green is better than Grant Williams. Am I in the minority on that one? I think so. I think Josh Green will be better than Grant Williams next year. Interesting. 
And I think Dwight will be better than Rashawn Holmes. <laughs> yeah, you're probably in the minority. Of it. All right, let's come back because I have uh, I have one more minority take, and it's about Dwight. Let's talk about that. Coming up. You don't believe you shouldn't be here. I need a recovery beer. All right, Isaac Harris, let's get into some more of our, our takes. We've been talking about takes that we agree with the fans with, some that we don't think we agree with the fans with. I think that Dwight will be better than Rashawn Holmes next year, which is maybe more an indictment on Rashawn Holmes than it is an endorsement on Dwight Powell. And you've got one more. What's your last one? Well, I was workshopping some Rashawn Holmes ones, but I I just go back to my 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 rule of thinking with him. I just can't have an opinion. I got to see. I got to. <laughs> I, I just can't have an opinion on him right now. Uh, here Here's my minority take from the fans. If the Mavericks start slow, it's not going to be because of Dwight Powell. It's not going to be because of the center spot. I think if the Mavericks, I think that will be the easy cop out of like, man, we're just not complete. And dude, there's just no way we can stack up at the top of the West. If we start the season with Dwight and it's like, all right, well, if we're not at the top of the West, it's not going to be because Dwight Powell's at the starting center spot. That's what I, I think it's going to be because Kyrie and Luca haven't figured it out yet. And it's going to take a little bit more time to first the season. It's going to be because maybe some of the shooters aren't hitting their threes. It's going to be because they still haven't figured out the defense yet. And their defense is just, they're like cones out there. <laughs> I don't think the leading reason why if the Mavericks start off slow to begin the season, is going to be because Dwight Powell's the starting center. The problem is they just be so much better with a, with a starting caliber center. And we still just haven't seen yeah. it. I mean, we still just, it still has not been a, a thing that is matric, matriculated. Martic. I ran right into the wrong word. Are yeah. you asking me about words? Matriculated. Matriculated? My first shot, my first make. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You got any more minority takes? No, that's my two. All right. We've got our hot takes now. We got the, sizz, the sizzling ones. This was hard because I really try to think of, I'm like, man, what's a, what's a spicy, spicy hot take about the Mavs this season? I, Do you have, is yours positive or negative? Because mine's kind of negative. I've got one that's like both. Okay. It's just spicy in general. Do you want me to go first or you? No, I'll go first. Okay. I don't think JaVale is washed. You're lying. Stop. Are you, are you really going to go? I, I really think that JaVale could have a, could have some kind of role. I just don't think it's going to be on the Mavericks. Cause I don't think they used him right last year. You look at a lot of this, the plays that he ran, the offense that he was in, Luca didn't want to play with him. And then you look at the defense. The defense is the one where he stood out the most. And it's because they kept trying to run him through this rotation and wouldn't run drop with him. And I think that he could, in a different role, I think he could be fine. He just wasn't going to be fine on last year's Mavericks team. And that's that's my take, and I'm sticking with Okay. <laughs> Good life support. Oh. Yeah, that take might have taken me out. That's yeah. I don't think I'm with you on that one. Um, he's washed on the Mavs. It's not going to work on the Mavericks, but somewhere else. He's going to go to like the Lakers, and he'll start for them. <laughs> God bless. Um. Okay. Here we go. Oh boy. <laughs> Jaden Hardy's traded by the deadline. Touche. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. Hey, here's my thing. I almost put this in a, my in the minority take in in the sense of I think he along with Josh Green has expectations that are just like out, I mean blowing the top off the top off the roof the roof off the building <laughs> <laughs> um, both killing it today yeah this is awesome and I think a lot of people are expecting a big season from Jaden Hardy and he's a lot of fun love Jaden love his personality everything. But I think I'm not as high on what he can be on on this team and like what and I hope I'm wrong. Hopefully he can be the third scorer off the bench and, and be all that. It just my spicy take is he's traded by the deadline because that's the piece they ultimately they value all the other pieces above him to make a substantial trade to be better. I think they're going to look at it and be like, "All right, let's look at our let's look at the table. Let's look at the platter of all of our trade assets." Yeah. And it's, you know, Derek Lively, the future first round pick, it's Josh Green, Omax, Jaden Hardy. And it's like all of our young pieces, 
on the table. I think I think they're going to look at it and say, I think we value all four all four of the other pieces: Lively, Omax, the Future First, and Josh Green over Jaden Hardy. Because we've also kind of looked at some of those, like where does the scoring two guards? He hasn't shown yet that he can play the point guard spot efficiently. If he's a smaller scoring two guard off the bench, what's the what's that trajectory in the league? And I think that's the that's the spot that they look at and say, all right, we're, I know they were unwilling in the Capella talks. I get all of that, and hopefully I'm dead wrong and he kills it this year. That would be awesome because we love covering him. But my spicy take is he's on a different team come the trade deadline. Party, let's go party. Yeah, this one's tough because I, I I agree with you in the sense that at some point, like, what if they're not better to start the year? You've got to do something. Like, they they can't just sit on their laurels and like just be like, okay, we're we're just, we're expecting to be better. Like all the offseason moves we made, we got better. Blah blah. They've got to make some kind of move, and I think Jaden would be the one because yeah, you look at some of these guys. Look at they just dumped the Warriors just dumped Jordan Poole. And he helped them win the finals, but they had to dump him for, for reasons. Uh, Tyler Hero is in trade talks all the time for the Heat. Those guys both got Portland's paid. like, nah, we don't want him. We don't want him. <laughs> We've got one of those in Anthony Simons, and they paid him, and they've got to figure out what to do. And him and Lillard couldn't even win together. You know, like they've got to figure that out. Uh, Tyrese Maxey is maybe the one of this group that but, has But he's a, a point guard, though. But he can handle the ball a little bit more yeah. and be a point. And so that's why we've been looking for, can he add that to his game? That takes him, that changes you from a Jordan Poole to a Tyrese Maxey, like in, in your trajectory. Mm. Uh, and so, yeah, that that's the issue is how much do you, you pay a guy like this? How much can you win if that's one of your second, third options, fourth options sometimes? That's my thing, too, is they, they want to win now. They want to be in the title conversation. They have, to, they have to win now. That's with Luca's timeline, with bringing Kyrie back, and now you're gonna now you look at it and say, Jaden Hardy, Omax, and Derek Lively. Like, can you commit to all three of those guys getting substantial minutes and enough for them to take a, a leap and to grow and to be what they want them to be? That's where it's kind of tough because generally win now teams, they want win now players. They they don't want to go through the growing pains and have to wait and all of that. So that's what I'm saying. It's like if you have one or two of those guys, I think it could work. Or if you had a better like third best player or like fourth best player to where like you were the Warriors and you have, you know, this star studded, you know, cast at the top. And then you have some of these like younger guys at the bottom to where you're like playing that balance. I mean, they still want a title, but now the young guys really haven't developed. So that's just my. That's my spicy take, and we all love Jaden. Has nothing. I love. I love Jaden Hardy. If we didn't have Luca, or if like we didn't, yeah, if we didn't have Luca, or if we were we're still coming along, then it's like, yeah, that, then that take is super dumb because you want to keep all those guys and develop them and you know put them out there. If you lose games, you lose games. But for what this team wants to do this year and and next year and the next few years, then it's gonna be tough tough to develop all these guys. It is going to be tough. And for Jaden Hardy especially, like I, I remember going back to our draft profile of him before we even thought that he would be on the Mavericks. I said, a player like this, it just is so hard for him to be as good at all the requisite skills you have to be to be a scoring guard in this league. You have to be so good at each individual aspect of your game. If you're not bringing much else to the, to the table – not passing, not defense, not, you know, like you're not bringing a bunch of rebounding, like you're not bringing a bunch of other things to the table. You've got to be so good at those individual things that you make up for it. And it's just going to be hard for him to take the next level from, okay, well, he's good. He can shoot to, oh, he's great. And we need to keep him. And you know, he's, he's not tradable. That kind of, that kind of status. Yeah. It's just going to be hard to make that jump. Yeah. My other take goes with yours is I think Dante Exum will play more than Jaden Hardy next year. Whoa, I debated on an XM one because I, I do like XM a lot, but watching him in these Australia games, he's their he's their clear third guard. It's Patty Mills and, and Josh Giddy are starting together, and you can decide what Josh Giddy is. He's like this weird point forward. He's six nine, but he, he handles the ball. Uh, and then P- Patty Mills is even like a weird uh shooting guard that's in a point guard's body kind of deal. But Dante Exum is their definite third guard and their their third ball handler off the bench. He he closed the game the other night when Josh Green got hurt. And I think he would have, may have closed anyway because they went smaller. Uh, instead of playing two bigs, they played one big. 
And he, he can do some stuff. Like, he can handle the ball. They, they have him guard point of attack, and they really need that. The Mavericks need it. Australia needed it, but the Mavericks really needed it uh, this past year, and they could use it. The, the shot looks pretty good. He was taking pull-up twos, and he had a catch-and-shoot three. And, like, he's doing some good stuff. And I think that the Mavericks are just going to need what he has more than a Hardy, a Seth Curry, and a Tim Hardaway. Like, remember, they still have Hardaway and Seth Curry probably above – Jaden Hardy in the depth chart. Like it's just going to be hard for all three of those guards to find minutes next year. Yeah. I think you just made some fans vomit when you're like, that's hey, why Tim I saved it Hardy. to the hot takes one. I just, <laughs> well, we probably, they've been probably vomiting since you started with the, the Jaden Hardy talk that's at the beginning true. of this segment. I got but, milk for you all. If it's too hot, <laughs> if you're doing hot ones, if you drink the milk, apparently it's a, uh, it's a sign of weakness. There you go. Let us know what you agree with us in the comment section. Let us know what your hot take is for the Mavericks right now so we can agree or disagree with it. And there, guys, thanks so much for listening to Lockdown Mavs. Peace out. Boom.